Why is this a, a good decision for the organization and William to, to have him come over to North America now? Well, I think it, it takes into account a number of factors, Paul. Number one being that we were faced with a deadline of January 16th and uh, Moto had done an excellent job with his development through the first half of the year and rather than being just staunch and you know having him just play out the rest of the year, we wanted to make sure we were evaluating everything and say maybe it would be better to to have him come over for the second half of the year, get adapted. We like we like what we've seen from William through the first half of the year and through the World Juniors. So now it's an opportunity for him to come and get acclimatized to playing in North America. His development in Moto, I know you guys have been happy with that. Sure. With them firing your coach, I believe, and just being dead last in the league, were there some concerns as to how the second half would uh, not, not really. Uh, with, with that, I mean, we're not really overly concerned. Obviously, we'd like them to do really well, but they, they would have a tough playoff run anyway with the relegation round. And their management has been excellent in dealing with us. And, and the opportunity that was afforded to Willie and how much he was playing is really what's most important to the, to the Leafs, not really where their standing was in, in, uh, in the table there in, in Sweden. So we're, we're more, more fixated on how, uh, what their coaching style was going to be and, and what they've done with them. And it's been excellent so far. So where they are in the standings and the coaching change really had no effect on it at all. Kyle, how much value do you guys place on, on being able to actually sort of control them? day in and day out in terms of his development and working with them. I mean, uh, how much more value is there that than? I would say there certainly is some, some value and utility to that and, and having him under our, our watch every day. But William's a very mature young man, and I think he knows what it, what it takes to every day to maximize his potential and his ability. So, you know, the, this. <laughs> So that's that's obviously uh, that, that's a benefit that, that helps us out, and, and I think more than anything, Chris, it's having him under our system and, and playing the way that we want to play uh, every day. That that's that's most valuable in the second half. He'll be tested physically. How uh, concerned are you about that? I, I'm not overly concerned. I think that's one of the aspects of his game that we wanted to improve upon, and it's it's going to have to happen over here. Is I think at the World Juniors, you you see he does put himself in positions with the puck where he you know he gets run at and, and hit a lot and. It's not going to take long to, to take uh, take some hits from from men playing that it, to where he's going to have to know not to do it again. And I think Connor Brown might be a good role model in that regard as well with how he succeeded. Connor Brown faced the same thing at the beginning of the year in the American League. He was always taking physical punishment, and throughout the year you, you just evolve. And they're both smart players and skilled players. And uh, Connor's figured out a way how to angle his body, how to maintain possession, and, and get away from a forecheck or back check, and, and maintain possession of the puck and move it up the ice. So we're we're hopeful and, and believe that William will have the same. Uh, we'll have the same learning curve and, and uh, adaptation once it gets to the Marlies. Is there a benefit in a year where you start off in Sweden, go to the World Juniors, and then have to adapt to North America ice and play in the AHL? I think the, the year, the way it's gone on, no two years are the same, but I, I think his progression through the season, having such a strong showing uh, in our training camp and exhibition season, then going to, to Europe where he was more comfortable and acclimatized, and then coming to the World Juniors and then coming here, it's, it's sort of scattered, but to me, it's, it's, a, it's a good development model for William. It's not afforded to everybody because of the nature of the season. And we just, rather than just be set in our ways of saying, oh, he's got to stay, and just because it, we want to kind of, you just ride the wave a little bit and, and go and, and take what the year affords you. And we thought it was a good decision with William. Was that kind of a plan going into the season, thinking that this was going to be available? and? The, the potential of this? No, we were leaving that up to William and how he played, and uh, Moto did an excellent job with him in the first half of the year. So once he showed that uh, you know, throughout the season that he could make an impact there, that was our first you know, real test for him as he was going and playing. And you know, he did that last year at the end of the year with Sotitalia. But this year, coming in and, and playing there the whole season and proving he could produce consistently was, was key. And then when he came to the World Juniors and was, and was successful there, then we shifted our attention and discussions as a staff as what might be best for him for the rest of the year. Does the fact that he went back after the World Juniors and he was already in Toronto and played two games suggest there was some wrestling about this decision? or? You know, why, why go back and right. come back? Right, yeah, I, I certainly understand the way it looks. I think that was just our, as uh, you guys know, we had a lot going on last week. So um, we, uh, more than anything, we, we need to have discussions as a staff. And th we held those last week, uh, Brendan, Dave, Mark Hunter, Brandon Pritam, myself, uh, as to what was best for William, knowing that we had this uh, January 16th deadline that we were up against and whether we wanted to. Uh, in fact, consider it, which we did, and then once we did, we kind of went through the particulars and, and uh, rolled on from there. How receptive was he to the news or to the idea? I think he was good. He, the thing about William that you find it, is that he's, he wants to do what's, what's best for his development, and, and he and his agent, Paul Theofanis, both 
uh, left it on us, and and uh, there was no pushback. There was full acceptance, and which was which was good. Just to be clear, after the 16th, you could have only brought him up after Moto season was yeah, over. That's correct. We couldn't have we couldn't have reassigned him back after right. that. Correct. So you've got the Swedish Embassy with the Marlies, it looks like now. This is a strong contingent. Well, the Marlies are playing really well now, too. After a, a pretty rough start, Gord Deneen and his staff have done, a, have done a very good job. So comes in at a time, they've, we've got points in nine, our last nine games with the Marlies and just outside of a playoff spot. And more than that, playing well. We're not, at the beginning of the year, we were allowing a lot of shots and become a lot better defensively and playing with control of the puck. So it, it lends itself more to the way that William plays right now as well. Do you think he'll be able to play right off the bat when, when those Charlotte games coming up? I don't think he'll be playing in Charlotte, no. I just There's, there's too much uh, that, that we'll have to deal with and, and too many um, immigration and visa issues that we'll have to cross through. We're, our focus is to get him over here by the weekend and get him into practice next week and, and play in Hamilton next Friday. If, if things get expedited, then we'll consider it, but I would say it's doubtful. Can you completely rule that whether he's come up here? you guys down there is that completely off the table it's the same thing that I, I said to Lance last week about Connor Brown uh, right now there's 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 not a chance it's uh, we need to be patient we can't live and die with if he has a good weekend and, and I know and I fully expect he, that the media will continue to ask every good weekend he has is he going to come up and the answer will be no we need to be patient develop him properly and have him be able to come up when he's able to sustain being an NHL player versus come up and then go back down and just be more scattered than a season already has been. It seems like that's been the model with the college. Like you said Connor Brown will get called up even, right. even with a young guy like Josh Levo. We haven't seen him get called up a, sure. a whole lot aside from I think the first time. But right. Is there a conscious effort there? Yes. It's to be patient with these guys and, and make sure that we're maximizing their development in the AHL before we throw them off the deep end here. And I think more than anything more so than just putting them in on the fourth line and playing them five or six minutes a night. We want them to be able to come up and be able to contribute in, in what they're at where their skill level dictates versus bring them in and throw them into a different role and say, okay, now work your way up. This this team's lineup and depth chart is make sure that they're ready that once they've when we do make that call that they've maximized their potential in the American League. Kyle, are you and the management team happy with some of the changes you've seen since Peter took over behind the bench? Certainly, I think um, you know, I'd be hard pressed to to argue that we're we're we've outshot teams in back-to-back -back games which is uh, which is nice and um, we're certainly pleased with the direction it's going but you I think you expect that early bump now we're going to get a test of whether we can sustain it and the messaging continues to stay consistent and, and move on from from here I think it's it's a long process ahead and we're, obviously we're right outside the playoff uh, playoff pool right now we want to get in there and, and roll from there you tolerate maybe a question on Morgan Riley just curious as how you see his progression this season? I'm, uh, to me personally, I, I've been really happy with Morgan, particularly his play with the puck in our defensive zone and exiting our zone. And I think in the last number of weeks, he's taken more steps in, in progressing up the ice with the puck and generating play offensively. Now it's a next step is for him, for me, is to get inside the dots in the defensive zone, the offensive zone, use his shot, use his ability to, to be mobile up through the middle of the ice. and. We'll go from there. He's got tremendous potential, and it's up to us to work with him to maximize it, and I have no doubt he'll put in the, the work to do so. Peter Horacek is a veteran hockey guy. He's been around a lot of years, but how receptive have you found him to some of the other ideas that, that you guys are working on? He, he's been he's been excellent. He's The first day he sought uh, me out to discuss it and, and wants to discuss it on a daily basis. It's just a, a, a you know a communication throughout the whole entire staff and and, uh, and management has been has been really good and I think with any change that that's that's bound to happen everyone has to lean on each other to, especially in Toronto with the the amount of scrutiny that was on it just to ride through the wave of the week we were only going to do that together and and from that you start to have discussions about the inner workings of the team and progress from there and, and that's been that's been a lot of fun this past week things like analytics I believe you said that he gets that stuff between periods sometimes both assistants if I'm not mistaken but some of that stuff supplied to them right before Randy got it. And right, so with, rather than just inundating everybody, there's so, we have so limited, much, there's, the time is limited in between periods and it's such small sample stuff uh, that we really need to watch and, and be mindful of the big picture with what we're providing. If there's, if there's anything that's, that's glaring, I think the coaching staff picks it out on their own from watching the game and knowing which, which, where we're having success and where we're not.